All right, now at this point, uh, it doesn't matter how much progress you've made jotting things down, if you've got nothing written down, you're like, I literally just got my pens out. Can I ask you all to just put all pens and things out of your hands? And I just want to talk through, don't worry, you'll have plenty of time, this is going to be on the screen all lesson. I just want to talk through, what are we doing? What is it, how does it relate to what we've done already? And uh, why is it important, okay? So this heading, the key word that I want you to focus on is this one right here, applications. What does it mean? In maths, when we talk about how you apply something, it's like, hey, you learned a skill. You know how to do a thing now, but what can you do with that skill? What kinds of problems or what kinds of scenarios can you apply that skill to? Now, you'll often see textbooks kind of divide up, you know, the development of skill with the application of this, but this is why we're spending a whole lesson on it. It's not because the textbook does that, it's because, and I actually invite you to do this, uh, after we finish this, which might take about 15 minutes, okay? I invite you to go and look up, and I'll even write this to give us all a prompt to do it. Go and get last year's paper, uh, last year's HSC exam paper for your course, right? And one of the things which I'm gonna highlight when we go in there is that there used to be lots of questions that were what I like to call, it sounds a bit weird, but they were called naked questions. It's like, here's a log function, differentiate it, that's it. I'm not going to ask you to do anything else, like one mark, two marks, full stop. Okay? They didn't care whether you could use that skill to actually progress or make any more sophisticated thought, right? Now the thing which, and I don't know if anyone's got like older siblings or friends who are a bit older, the thing that struck people last year when they opened the paper was there was a much smaller number of those just, here's an easy one or two marks, right? Some of the papers, or some of the questions rather, welcome Michael, you open up the paper, and there'd be two full pages facing you, and it was just one question. A bit like this. See how this is like, what is this, three, three parts, right? Actually, it's not really three parts, it's kind of like four or five. They just haven't given you that many letters, the multi-part questions, even in the parts. These are the kinds of things with the HSC is actually trying to see, can you do this? I don't want you just to be able to apply a formula. I want you to see if you can interpret that, progress with that, solve a bigger problem with it, okay? So, Pick up your pens again, and now let's start to work through these together. Now that you understand why this is so important, that we can not just do a skill, but apply that skill to a problem. It first starts by saying, show that the tangent, this is part A, to y equals log base e of x. You can write that either in the way they've shown, or if you're slightly lazy like I am, ln x is also acceptable. I just want to really emphasize they're the same thing, different notation. Show them the tangent to this, at this particular point, and they name a point T, and it's got these coordinates, E comma one. Show that that tangent has this particular equation, okay? Now, first thing to note, right? What is the operative word here? What's the verb? What's the thing they're asking you to do? Show that, okay? So there are zero points for actually getting this result. They're like, we know what the result is. I want you to prove it. And it, we've talked about this before, in such a case that you actually can't prove it, you could still use that result for subsequent parts, all right? Now, I've jotted down some important information. We want to get to the equation of a tangent. Okay? Now, you've been supplied the point through which the tangent passes. We need one other piece of information to get the equation of the tangent. Anyone want to give me a suggestion? Yeah, go ahead. Gradient. We need a gradient, right? Point gradient form, that'll do it for us. Do you see what I mean by, this is an application of the problem. Nowhere do they say, would you please differentiate this thing for me? You kind of just have to work out that that's what's required, okay? But you've just told me, I need a gradient, so I'm gonna say dy on dx equals, and now we're gonna differentiate. Now this is just your stock standard log x, do you remember from last lesson? I know it was two days ago. What's our derivative? One over x. Okay, now I told you guys before, um, I think it's important to not just have equations, but to actually glue all of your equations with the right words and the right symbols so that you know what they mean, okay? So rather than just say, like a lot of people, please do not write this, on their next line, they're just gonna do this. Imagine you're me, you're the marker, and you see a student do this, right? What do you think they're doing? Why have they done this? Because it's not like wrong, there's a reason that they did it. Can anyone tell me where they've gotten this from? 
Have a look. It's all there on the board or in the question. Ian. Yeah, fantastic. But this is exactly what they were supposed to do and what we're supposed to do. There's the x-coordinate, E. They've just substituted it in. Okay, here's my problem. What does this mean, dy on dx? Like, literally, what does it mean? Yeah, Michael. Um, it's the derivative of y. Thank you. The derivative of y with respect to x. As x changes, y will also change. And this is how that happens. Okay. Now, what the next line suggests is that this is always how it's changing. dy and dx just equals that. But it's not always that. You put in a different value of x, like x equals 2, or 5, or negative 1, and you'll get a different value of this. So this is actually something separate to that. So instead of writing just that, here's what I'm going to suggest that you do write. We took the uh, x value from here. So I'm going to say, therefore, at t. So now I'm stating why I'm about to substitute it in. And further, instead of calling it just dy on dx, I'm just actually going to look forward across the question. Now this is a bit sneaky because I've already done this question, so I know this in advance, but this is a skill I want you to practice. You can see in part A, we're getting this uh, gradient of a tangent. That's what I'm about to calculate. It's not the only gradient I'm about to work out though. Can you have a look at the question? Go ahead and tell me, what's the other gradient I'm going to have to work out in a minute? Yeah, Keegan. Yeah, the gradient of the normal. Now, some of you remember what the normal is. Others of you, I'm going to remind you in a second. But I'm going to have two different gradients flying around. It's a recipe for disaster when you're like, I'm just writing gradient, and I'm like, which one is which? So here's what I'm going to do instead. What is our normal pronumeral for gradient? M. So I'll say M, but I want to specify what M it is. So I use a little subscript just written underneath there. The gradient of the tangent is going to be... And now I'm ready to do my substitution. 1 over E. Same answer, but this notation makes a huge amount of difference to what you're communicating. Okay? I've got a gradient. Why did I do that again? Why did I get a gradient for? To find the equation. Yeah, I'm looking for an equation. I'll put it together with this point. There's a gradient. I don't think you need my help for this part. Okay? Your equation and the tangent, put them in, and then can you get me to this result? It should take you two or three lines of working. Can you go ahead and do that? I'll give you 10 seconds head start, and then I'll do mine on the board. Okay. So I promised you that 10 second head start. Here's me trying to do my catch up, okay? Now remember, as, we, as you guys reminded me, the operative verb here is show that. So I really want to make sure I don't miss any don't skip any lines of working here. That's why you might think, Mr. Wu, I did that faster than you did. I'm like, yeah, I can do it faster, but the burden of communication is on me to actually show you I know what I'm doing, okay? So that's why I quoted the point gradient form so you can see I've done this really clearly. I haven't skipped any kind of expansion or simplification. I've got everything that you can see proves I know that they're right. Does that make sense? Doing so, okay so far? And that's part A. So that's not too complicated, okay? Now, part B says, it's like the next step, find the equation of the normal. Now, at this point, even though part C is the one that asks us to draw, I'm going to ask all of us to do this sort of now, right? Part C says, like, sketch. And that's what's going to help us understand the difference between the tangent and the normal. So can we all get, and this time, put a bit of effort into it. We've done some really rough sketches, but this time we're going to use the sketch to help us answer the question. So let's draw the best, neatest sketch that we can. Uh, get your, use a ruler for your um, set of axes and all that. I'm going to do the same. And let's try and draw what this is going to look like so we can see where the tangent goes and how that relates to the normal. So here's how I suggest you start. Chose the wrong red marker. Uh, all my markers suck. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now, I haven't put much on here because at this point, I actually want you to see the way in which I think through this to make this accurate, okay? I drew my set of axes, that's the easy part. Here's my y equals log x curve. And now I'm slowly going to put on the stuff that I've already known so that I can add on to it. Okay. 
Now, this point t, where is it? This is the point at which I remind you that this number e is equal to roughly 2.7, right? Roughly 2.7. Now, I don't have to get this exact, but it's going to help me if my diagram is like accurate enough to work from, right? So have a look at this diagram and where roughly should x equals 2.7 be? Where does it belong? Now to get a handle on this, my suggestion is that you remember what that value is right there. What is the x-intercept of this log x curve? Any suggestions? Hmm. Can I give you a clue? You guys remember we've been, um, Josh, we'll see if your answer is right in a second once I give everyone the clue. Remember we've com been comparing exponentials and logs a lot, right? This log curve is just the exponential curve, but it's been reflected, okay? Do you guys remember, you don't have to tell me, but do you remember what the y-intercept up there is? It's generally an easier number for people to remember. It's the same y-intercept as this x-intercept. Josh, do you want to tell us what it is? Uh, I'm not conscious of anymore. That's okay. Well, let's see. Did, who remembers what this y-intercept is over here? It's, it's one, right? Because if this is like, say, two to the power of x, two to the power of zero, is one. Uh, three to the power of zero is one. Whatever to the power of zero is one. So this one is the same thing, but for x instead of y. Now if that's one, now you can see where 2.7 should be, right? At least roughly. I can even eyeball this. I don't have a ruler, but that's going to be two. Three looks like it's going to be here. So I'm going to draw a line roughly where I think 2.7 should be. That looks about right to me. How do you feel about that? Ish? Okay. So that point right there, that's going to be t. Okay. Now, I actually, <laughs> I've been a bit sneaky. I have not probably drawn enough of this. You'll see why in a second. But I can at least put onto here, and your ruler is going to be so helpful. I can at least put onto here the equation that I've already found. x equals e y. What's the x-intercept of this equation? x equals e y. What's the x-intercept here? What do you reckon, Daniel? Zero. It's zero, right? Zero. Yeah, because you're putting y equals zero, you're going to go through x equals zero as well. So this tangent that I would like you all to draw with me right now, it's going to pass through t, it's also going to pass through the origin. So go ahead, pop your ruler in place. Let's see how good your accuracy is. Mine's not bad. Could do it better. But there you go. How's that? That's my x equals ey line. Hmm. I'm actually slightly impressed because I eyeballed that. Anyway, so there's my tangent. Now you can see here, I'm going to use this as my way to illustrate what is this next thing we're going to work out, the normal. 